good evening uh, everyone uh, respected uh, professor hemlata taleshra the director of this uh, the expert lecture series and uh, the inspiration for intellectual discussions and gathering and uh, mrs usha ji the another civil servant who is continuously engaged in addressing certain uh, very pertinent things about education i have been observing her since uh, uh, more than two decades that her contribution to education and educational management and her concern for quality education is highly appreciated and all the distinguished participants here i am extremely happy to share this particular platform with uh, my teacher professor k doraswami when i was doing my masters in education at regional institute of education he was uh, a very tough teacher educator the moment i say tough teacher educator there was no way in compromising the quality in terms of teacher preparation whether you talk about uh, writing the lesson plans whether you talk in terms of analyzing the content or whether you are actually displaying your skills in the classroom teaching and learning process so i am very happy that professor daraswami who has been working with the national mission for teacher education for over uh, four decades kindly accepted to be a panelist today to discuss about uh, the professional standards of teachers and we also have uh, dr uh, shruti tiwari who is uh, a teacher educator by heart and an educational administrator by practice who is engaged in the quality of teaching and learning in the country so friends uh, we have coined this panel discussion on the national professional standards of teachers in india you know it was in 2021 very recent on the 15th of november the national council for teacher education government of india has come out with a preliminary draft report on this a uh, very very important document and which was kept in the public domain and welcomed the suggestions the critical review about this document so that it can be implemented throughout the country so the national professional standards of teachers has been designed to ensure quality in teacher education and the sets out to national education policy 2020 which basically aims for equitable access to the highest quality education for all learners therefore to ensure that the mission of national education policy 2020 for having high quality teaching or making education in india a global knowledge power this document is created and uh, why the professional standards are necessary in india for teachers and how it can be really invigorate quality in education with these initial remarks uh, i request professor daraswami to open up uh, uh, his initial words to uh, encourage discussion on this theme over to professor daraswami so thanks to the organizers and uh, my esteemed student professor pushpanadam for inviting me to be a panelist uh, this evening in fact uh, till uh, 
morning i was not sure whether i would be able to uh, join uh, as a panelist but then since i made a commitment i thought i will join for a short duration and uh, make a brief presentation and stay on to learn more from uh, ex uh, experienced uh, educationists particularly teacher educationists now i will uh, not go into making any evaluative statement about the document in particular i will only set the ball rolling to know why we require professional standards for teachers i think the professional standards for teachers are there for the last uh, more than 3 decades and in fact uh, professional standards for teachers uh, establishment of professional standards for teachers preceded the learning standards and there is a need to link the i'm not talking of uh, india in particular but uh, across the world and there is a need to link the professional standards for uh, teachers with the learning standards most of the uh, states countries have uh, learning standards and some countries states in particularly in usa and other some of the countries have uh, national professional standards for you no know, teachers very few have professional standards for educational leaders over uh, what is the draft document includes uh, professional standards for lead teachers also now i'll uh, begin by rather defining what teaching is and uh, some of the uh, functions of a, a teacher which reveal that uh, there is a, a knowledge base that is required you now for teachers to uh, do what he or she is required to do as a, a professional i used to define teaching as an act and some people have uh, uh, reservations to reduce uh, a complex process of teaching as a, an act but even if you consider teaching as a, a process it is a an intended a purposeful process what is that intention the intention is to facilitate students the learning and the learning includes the learning standards the the knowledge the skills the beliefs the dispositions and uh, including you know the self concept as a a learner now teaching is also a process which is uh, interactive there is a, a, a interaction between the learner and the learners and the you know a teacher a teacher is expected to uh, use eff uh, effectively the communication you know skills in fact uh, we, if you look at uh, the learning standards now there are two kinds of uh, learning standards one is the content standards and the Uh, other is the process standards particularly you know in mathematics now this refer mostly to uh, curriculum standards but then subsequently the national council of uh, teachers of mathematics have, uh, has come out with uh, principles and standards for teaching of mathematics and this uh, uh, these the standards include the content standards and the you no know, process standards in mathematics the process standards include uh, problem solving reasoning 
representation, communication, and connection. Now, some uh, you know, states, they call it as academic standards or the you know, uh, academic standards. Even in India, like in Andhra Pradesh, uh, they call these process standards as academic standards. Now, one of the uh, process standards is communication. In fact, a teacher should uh, uh, support uh, the learners in communicating whatever ideas that they you know, generate. And uh, this will include the communica uh, uh, communication abilities of the ideas that they you know, uh, generate. In fact, uh, you know, in Andhra Pradesh uh, test books, there is no mention of uh, definitions in mathematics. The definition, in fact, is a, a summarization of the essential attributes of uh, objects that are called as, uh, you know, uh, exemplars of the concept. The concept formation includes abstracting the uh, essential or the critical attributes of the concept, ignoring the variable attributes or non-essential attributes and then summarizing these critical attributes to know to communicate what a concept is so uh, teaching also helps in you know, communication it is a process of interaction between the uh, teacher and the students the uh, teaching is also a, an integrative process in fact teachers knowledge is uh, uh, integrated knowledge and one such uh, integrated knowledge is uh, what uh, Shulman calls it as uh, PCK, pedagogical uh, content knowledge, which is the knowledge uh, uh, intersection of uh, the content and the pedagogy. And uh, recently you will find in the literature PCK as subject matter knowledge required for teaching. This is one area I will uh, come to about uh, whether such an area, such a, a knowledge is being developed through our uh, pre-service as well as uh, uh, continuing professional development programs or not, and why such uh, knowledge is uh, no important. Uh, uh, see, then is the, and also you will uh, notice, uh, recognize the uh, integrated knowledge of a, a, a teacher when a teacher plans his lesson. And it is also seen planning a lesson, a teacher uh, decides on the content that the student is required to learn, the readiness of the learner in terms of the prerequisites and uh, establishing a connection between uh, the prerequisite knowledge that is required for uh, successful learning of the you know, content and how it is uh, connected to a future learning. And this is uh, the curriculum, curriculum knowledge, knowledge uh, helps in identifying the prerequisite knowledge and then connecting uh, the uh, ideas or the uh, content, items of content, uh, the knowledge. Then is the, uh, the appropriate uh, strategies that are required, you know, for uh, making students to learn, see that uh, knowledge. And then the assessment that is to be used to know whether students have uh, learned what they have, they are uh, required to the learn. And finally, the, uh, I consider decision making or judgment of a teacher is a very uh, critical and uh, critical uh, ability and all other abilities of a teacher are only subordinate to the the, uh, the ability to now decide in planning uh, decision making takes place and in teaching during teaching and subsequently also 
that is what we call the reflection on reflection in reflection and say about and uh, these reflections are uh, in a way uh, making you know decisions about the uh, appropriateness adequacy of the learning activities that are you know provided now the teaching as a, 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 a complex process required judgment action capacity to reflect and revise the decisions on the basis of one's own observations and the uh, insights in fact teacher uh, judgments are influenced by his or her understanding of teaching learning learner subject matter knowledge and uh, their interrelationship now you see even in the planning you see what is expected is that uh, the teacher the planner is expect uh, uh, align the content the learning outcomes learning activities assessment strategies you know, resources so therefore uh, such a, an understanding of uh, the understanding of teaching learning learner and uh, subject matter knowledge and their relationship uh, influence teachers decision making now a teacher as a, a professional is uh, required to add, uh, as a professional require uh, knowledge skills and you know beliefs and teachers knowledge uh, can be classified as content knowledge pedagogical knowledge pedagogical content knowledge and techno pedagogical uh, content knowledge that means teachers pro as a professionals required to teach whatever subject that they teach with uh, the technology now coming to the uh, pre survey uh, initial teacher education programs or teacher education programs if you are <clears throat> talking of uh, uh, concurrent model that is integrated uh, a model the content and uh, you know, the pedagogy are uh, taught the professional uh, components are taught uh, concurrently but unfortunately independently there is no integration between the content and the pedagogy for uh, developing that knowledge for <coughs> knowledge for uh, you know, teaching now content knowledge as a substantive knowledge syntactic knowledge that is knowledge of and the knowledge about and even when uh, uh, experts in the subject teach the subject the courses related to the subject they only talk of the substantive knowledge that is included in uh, undergraduate programs and rarely they connect that undergraduate uh, subject matter knowledge with the subject matter knowledge at the you know, school level and then they do not discuss why such a knowledge that means uh, higher levels of uh, knowledge is required for teaching uh, the subject matter knowledge in the you know, school curriculum therefore there is a very little scope for a teacher to prospective teacher to acquire the pedagogical you no know, content knowledge <clears throat> by coming to pedagogical knowledge the methods that are taught in the pre series program are generic very general and then it is not so easy to uh, uh, use those generic you know, methods for teaching uh, subject specific content uh, knowledge in fact research on uh, uh, teacher effectiveness say that uh, uh, these subject specific 
domain specific uh, content specific strategies are more effective than using uh, uh, generic methods of teaching it is therefore in uh, see when we when we prepared that uh, uh, curriculum framework for a four year we we have, we have kept in mind that instead of general methods like say if it is a mathematics how to teach mathematical concepts how to teach mathematical generalizations both like uh, uh, definition generalizations generalizations that can be proved how to teach problem solving instead of teaching uh, about problem solving or teaching of problem solving teach through problem solving such kind of uh, abilities are required for a teacher to be uh, <coughs> more more uh, you know, effective and then help a student to develop the problem solving abilities use reasoning and then uh, also uh, connect different uh, knowledge from one domain to the knowledge from the with the knowledge from the other domains or knowledge within the domain mathematics for example is a highly structured body of knowledge and if you take uh, an area of mathematics the concepts are related in terms of uh, uh, conceptual hierarchy that is uh, superordinate subordinate and uh, the coordinate concepts and teachers uh, idea or if your teachers can generate such uh, a conceptual hierarchy they understand the connections and they can make the students to connect <coughs> connect that knowledge this is the reason why i was uh, not very sure of joining i was not well for <coughs> almost a week uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the focus in the pre-service program should be on the uh, content, uh, the uh, subject specific, domain specific and uh, content specific. You all agree that uh, even uh, you know, elementary school teacher or primary school teachers who are required to teach different subjects, they don't teach the subjects in the same way or at least expected that they don't teach all subjects in the same way. <coughs> they have to change the style of teaching of one subject uh, from that of the <coughs> other subject. Sorry, I'll uh, stop here. Yes, then, sir. Uh, yeah, I think so. It is creating and, some problem. And then join uh, during the discussion. So kindly stay with us, yes. And Pushnathan, sir, we can, after uh, Shruti, ma'am, we can again have... Uh, Sir, uh, sir's expert fine. comments because definitely listening to you sir it's <laughs> really enlightening and we feel that we keep listening to him for long but yes. Pushnathan, sir, please thank you, thank you dr sneema and uh, uh, professor doraswamy has actually given uh, a platform set a stage to further discussion he said uh, teaching is not something that you casually do Teaching has a definite purpose and teaching as an act. So if you want to make your act effectively and efficiently, one has to understand the intent and also include <laughs> all essential competences, the skills that are required to make that act appealing, encouraging, and also empowering the learners. See, the core idea of teaching is to empower learning invigorate learning. So without learning, teaching has no, no meaning at all. Therefore, how to map teaching with learning and how to map uh, the teaching competencies with learning outcomes? I think that is the point that uh, you mentioned very clearly. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, please uh, unmute yourself, Prasadar Swami, sir. Mm -hmm. So let me invite uh, the second speaker, uh, Dr. Shruti Tiwari. Shruti Tiwari, you have about 20 to 25 minutes to make your presentation. Over to Shruti. 
Uh, so very good evening to all of you, all esteemed members, professors, teachers, teachers, educators present here. I'm very much thanks to uh, Dr. Pushpandham and Professor Himlata Talesra, ma'am, to invite me on the very important topic of this lecture series of that National Framework for Professional Standards of Teacher to present the critical reviews on the draft. I'm also very much thanks for the Rajasthan Council of Educational Administration and Management Council, WCPA, Earth Constitution Institute, USA, CCEM, Indian Affiliation, Swami Keshwan and Rajasthan Agriculture University, Bikaner, International Forum for Global Justice, uh, Social Justice, Education and Empowerment, and SMTK be the way College of Education, Tilwai Gujarat, who has given me this opportunity to talk with all of you. So I would like to present my critical reviews basically in the uh, today's panel discussion. Uh, this is very much important aspect, which is draft, drafted by NCTE and very much important for school teachers and as well as with the teacher educators also, because both of them are so integrated with each other. So we cannot, you know, deny as well as we cannot overlook on this important framework of professional standards. So let me present my views. This is drafted with the purpose that to ensure that all teachers at all levels of school education are passionate, motivated, highly qualified, professionally trained, well equipped and well supported for growth in their careers. So I suppose this purpose is actually fulfilling from so many years in India that teachers fraternity is actually passionate, motivated also, and no doubt it is very much highly qualified, professionally trained. I don't know about the scenario of well equipped and well supported for growth because what actually the outcomes to be seen in this 21st century, we are lacking somewhere in that part. So we have to come with the very much important intentions to improve all these things. And I congratulate NCTE for drafting this very fruitful framework for standards professional standards of teachers so that we can come to the some standards points on which we can say that yes the teachers are trained and they are actually ready for 21st century in the global scenario the preliminary draft of nct actually drafted on three parts understanding the teaching as a profession what we are actually listening in the previous session of professor. He has given a very much important views of him on the teaching profession, what is teaching, what is actually the requirements for a effective for an effective teaching. Now the second part of is drafted on the professional standards. Third part is national professional standards for teachers. And they have drafted on four standards. These are core values and ethics, professional knowledge and understanding, second standard. And the third standard is professional practice and competence. And fourth one is the professional development and growth. Actually, we are working from so many years on all these standards, what actually here presented on the draft. But if the cumulative effort of all over the Indian teacher education, as well as the school education scenario, if we'll evaluate. So somewhat 
we should conclude on that part something is missing from the outcomes what actually we want to see we will hope we'll discuss this in session and we'll come out with some kind of results that where we are with the strong points and with where we are with some areas of improvement still needed in the teacher education as well as in the school education programs now the strength of draft what draft what i found that it is very rigorous efforts which are reflecting on the draft as it is well designed major aspects of professional standards included in the draft framework is also present for all levels of teachers progression in their career path this is somewhat the with the new names of uh, four levels so uh, all four levels are with the different names now what we will do with the primary teachers secondary teachers and senior secondary teachers or prt tgts and pgts post which is actually here in the school education two cases are explained for understanding the professional standards and their progression with these examples we can easily understood what actually this draft want to convey to us weaknesses in the last after reviewing and presentation of my views because i don't think we should uh, you know talk on the weaknesses we can talk on the areas of some improvements if will find on that part i want to you i want to present my views on the topic of the draft the topic is 1.2 evolving roles of teachers and teacher educations which is on the page number 6 of this draft and the para is third and this paragraph is actually stated that with the recent technological advance in education and the ease of access to information no doubt with this era of internet and 3d robotics artificial intelligence augmented reality all kind of these digital as well as the advanced techniques of technology is with us so 100% the transformation and one transition and the shift is there to the 21st century teachers skills so specifically the role of teachers as well as the teacher educators i suppose the role of teacher educators are very much you know changed in this era so the requirement for this in my view that implement 21st century learning strategies into curriculum the assessment schemes and the instruction what actually it is also written in the draft that how can we can implement all these things so we have to discuss on all these things whether whether they are sufficient or something else required for this second thing is build teaching staff capacity to demonstrate their 21st century skills in support of student learning in the schools and in teacher education institutes also it is 100% you know with teacher education institutes also because teacher educators are the trainers of these school teachers so first we have to skill or the capacity building should be started from the teacher education institutes for this purpose uh equip educators with data to product, uh, to proactively identify and support the student who are off track so this gap has to be filled with the teacher education programs now the next view i want to present on my side on the page number 7 of this draft of para 2 this topic is challenges faced by the teachers today that these all are with new assessment methodologies will be necessary to holistically evaluate each teacher's performance and students here the line you have to see that each teacher's performance and 
students' academic progress in a multidisciplinary environment. These methodologies will focus on 21st century skills and child-led teaching rather than mechanical teaching or the rote learning. So again, this is very much important aspect of this draft and the requirement for the 21st century skills. I have three sets of skills in this. About around 19 skills are there. So uh, the teacher educators or the teacher education program has to select some of the pre, uh, skills and make the complete curriculum as well as the training programs on only those three or four sets of skills or we have to come with all kind of skills and integrate within the curriculum is in teaching practices as well as in the internships. The next is I want to again the third fourth view of my on page number 15 para three where the topic is 3.2 is a teacher career progression in national professional standard for teachers. That is teacher education program and qualifications must be subject to the accountable provision to ensure consistency across the nation. To address the vast variation among teacher training institutes and across the levels of qualification while bringing in the accountability, a quality framework such as professional teacher standards and evaluation framework for teacher education is essential. These standards become a guiding path for pre-service teachers and in-service teachers. 100% this paragraph is very much important for all teacher education institutes throughout the India. And we have to work on that, whether this consistency will continue with, with all teacher education institute across the nation or only some of the supreme institutions will take the responsibility for this upcoming professional standards. This is the main point to be taken care of. Now, from my side, I want to say to all of you that it is needed or the reconsidering or the rethinking on what that mapping of all program object objectives and the program specific objectives or the and as well as the course objectives of curriculums of teacher education program with 21st century skills. Identification of teaching contents in syllabi should be as per the recent trends of education. The recent trends has to be identified with all teacher educators as well as the teacher education institutes that what actually the recent trends, what the professor was saying that not only the mechanical methodologies as well as the old methodologies are proper in today's scenario. So teaching practice and internships must be outcome based as per the recent developments in education industry, as well as need based at regional, national and global level. Also, teacher education institute should put more interest on practical aspect of this teacher training programs. Then only we can come with the desired outcomes of these professional standards. The second part of this paragraph is the qualification of the teacher educators as well as the school teachers. So what is actually the parameter? Qualification status for jobs or the qualification status for all other kind of administrators administration and management kind of work in the education system. So I think institutions on quality checks through national ranking, NAC, NIRF councils or feedbacks should be mandatory to all kind of institutions, teacher education, as well as the school education also. Views presented again on the page number 15 and the paragraph third the topic is teacher career progression in NPCT. The policy defines that the teacher teaching in each of these school levels should have growth opportunities within each level without a need to move to another level for career progression. This is a very good aspect, what the draft is saying. And the teacher's career progression should be dependent on their professional skills, quality of teaching, 
and overall teacher performance. The current NPST document pro proposes four career stages and professional standards for teachers at each stage. These stages are first as beginner teachers, second is proficient teachers, third is expert teacher and the lead teachers. This is one of the motivational structure of the draft that, oh, that is very great that the teacher is going to having the tag of the beginner teacher. And then after the performance of after the beginning, the proficient teacher he will become, then it, he will become the expert and then after that lead. So this is the good thrust for the motivation in the framework. Now, how it will be going to implement the personal relationships and other kind of things will not become on this part and teachers, teacher education, institutions, teacher educators, school teachers, religiously will do the task for, you know, moving them from beginners to proficient to expert to lead teachers very religiously. Then the draft, the purpose of draft is, will be going to successful. Requirement to be checked here. The most important part is that the curriculum of teacher education program on which preparations of teachers depends, whether their present designing of curriculum meet the desired standard of teaching profession throughout the country, because the draft is asking for the consistency throughout the nation. Now, what are, what are all other as well as how much follow ups of working policies and implementation standards will be there for the assessments and the evaluation if teacher education institutes and schools are associated with draft? Is there any need of inter interdisciplinary approach required for training of pedagogy and methodology, specifically IT and computer sciences, when we are talking about artificial intelligences, augmented reality, robotics, et cetera, and this education? Now, uh, what I will find, I have find area to be improved throughout this the draft. The roadmap to achieve the professional standards should be prepared for teacher educators also, which is prepared for, which is actually prepared for school teacher that should be drafted for teacher educators separately so that it will, you know, unite and integrate with both of them because the objective and to achieve the objectives are the same. API formats also to be added in draft. Two things I have not written here because this is the, you can say the offside part of this, that the salary structures as well as the other kind of motivational intensive schemes should be properly implemented in the private and the government sectors. Otherwise, the story will be going to be same. So NCT should provide some important instructions as well as some mandatory requirements for these things are also there for motivating the school teachers also. So thank you very much for listening me carefully as well as very patiently. Now I am handing over to Dr. Pushpandham, Professor Pushpandham. Thank you so much for inviting me on this platform. Now. Thank you, thank you uh, Dr. Shruti, uh, for a very elaborative presentation on the the document created by NCT. You know, the point that you mentioned is uh, the teacher's career path <laughs> was presented in the document as uh, an aspirant who is coming to teaching profession and joining into the pre-service teacher education program. And then uh, he starts his career as a stage one, the one who a fresh graduate entering into teaching. And then over a period of time, he reaches to a stage where there is a, a proficiency of teaching where he accumulates through experience. And the specialist teacher and the lead teacher. So the document says that at each and every level, the teachers require certain body of knowledge, skills and competencies, and also the ethical practices and values that they need to demonstrate in the teaching and learning process if you really want to have the quality of education. So both the presentations uh, basically talks about what is teaching, 
and uh, how this teaching has to be made qualitative practice and for which why these quality standards are essential you know the idea of education which was uh, only meant for few privileged in the ancient times has become a common commodity as a global common good education this is the terminology that unesco uses education is a global common good and it is uh, the right of every individual to get a quality education and that is the actual commitment it's a national commitment it's a global commitment so it is not establishing institutions we have made significant uh, development in terms of providing educational facilities universal access and we also reached to certain satisfactory level in terms of retaining students reducing the dropouts but the concern is to what extent our students are learning is a fundamental question to what extent the institutions of education the schools the primary the secondary the universities are actually creating that learning culture thereby the students can really learn and that learning can be applied to their life and living so my two focused questions to both the speakers especially to professor daraswamy and then i will open now uh, the entire presentation for discussion we have been listening right from the ages when we talk about education the first fundamental question that comes to our mind is is education a discipline and this debate has gone over a, over few decades and then started questioning whether education has a distinct discipline or it is a, a multi discipline therefore you try to understand the educational issues educational processes by borrowing the knowledge domain from psychology from sociology from history some philosophy and then you try to see that how in education as a practice is understood effectively so we have moved education as a discipline to education as a, a multidisciplinary subject field and similarly we also ask a question a very fundamental question is teaching a profession there are several professions which are well accepted in the country and abroad so to what extent teaching is recognized as a profession in indian context i would like to you to focus few things on this topic first professor daraswamy please or dr shruti you are asking me uh, professor prashunada yes sir yeah. okay okay one is about uh, whether it is a discipline or not and, and the, uh, the teaching is a profession or not yeah teaching is a profession or not i think it is a profession because there is a a knowledge base required for performing the act or the process of teaching and this knowledge base is i don't think is from different multidisciplinary areas now for example i always uh, argue one i have already cited the great mathematicians may not be a, a go, uh, effective teacher educators all that mathematics that they use the research that they do may not be helpful in understanding the mathematics that a teacher is required to teach but then looking at the mathematics at the school level from an advanced point of view will provide a teacher the knowledge to take to a higher level and uh, address many of the problems faced by the student now in psychology for example what are the areas that are offered in ma psychology 
you have organizational psychology, criminal psychology, a clinical psychology, and how many universities offer cognitive and constructive psychology? Now, the, this has evolved as a body of knowledge which has relevance for a teacher. Similarly, the sociology. So, sociology of education is, is maybe a part of sociology as a, a, a study, but then you require different kind of a knowledge for a teacher's understanding of the sociological aspects and use sociological perspectives uh, uh, in teaching. That is more about knowing the learner. So therefore we say the learner learning and the uh, diversity of uh, uh, learners as uh, domains of you know, teacher's knowledge. So these specific knowledge are required for the teacher, not for others who study psychology. Same is the case. I am not an expert in sociology like you, right? But then I know that uh, even in the di disciplines, for example, now physics, physical science, if you are preparing a teacher of physical science, now you have an, an undergraduate program, different combinations, which has either physics or chemistry, in some cases, maybe both. But then you take them as... Uh, uh, student teachers, if, even if they have studied physics and some other subjects, like you know, electronics is not whole of physics. So, if just studying electronics will not help a teacher to have a thorough, a deep understanding of the physics that he or she is required to teach. See, in biology, for example, there are they say different, there are cross cutting areas in botany and zoology. And this is offered just to have a sufficient workload in botany as well as zoology, or they show it as uh, different you know, you know, papers. Okay, I think this they, they, there is a, a knowledge base for a, a teacher, and that needs to be the courses that are de dealing with these knowledge bases should be included in the pre service teacher education you know, programs. Thank you. Thank you, sir. In, 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 I don't in know whether view, I have uh, uh, clarified that others can join. And uh, I think now I open uh, the presentations for questions.